Good afternoon. This is Salvador Villaseñor in charge of Investor Relations at Walmix. Thank you for joining us today to review the results for the second quarter of 2024. Today with me is Ignacio Caride, President and Chief Executive Officer of Walmart de Mexico y Centroamérica, Raúl Quintana, our Chief Omnichannel Operating Officer, and Paulo García, our Chief Financial Officer. The date of this webcast is July 24, 2024. Today's webcast is being recorded and will be available at www.walmex.mx. Before we start, let me remind you that this, the content of this webcast is property of Walmart de Mexico SABDCB and is intended for the use of the company shareholders and the investment community. It should not be reproduced in any way. This webcast may contain certain references concerning Walmart de Mexico SABDCB's future performance that should be considered as good faith estimates made by the company. These references only reflect management's expectations and are based upon currently available data. Actual results are always subject to future events, risks, and uncertainties, which could materially impact the company's actual performance. Now, it is my pleasure to turn the call over to our CEO, Ignacio Caribe. Thanks, Salvador, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us to hear about our second quarter 2024 results and progress of our long-term strategy. This will be my first time sharing with all of you our quarterly results. And as we always do, I want to start by thanking all of our associates for their effort and commitment, as these results would not be possible without their contribution. It has been over two months since my appointment as CEO, and while our business strategy remains, we have identified three key factors that will make us move even faster in achieving our goals. Automation, digitalization, and simplification. First, automation, which is not just a trend, it's a necessity. When we say that we are a technology-powered company, we reiterate our commitment to incorporating more and better tools to strengthen our leadership. Automation allows us to optimize processes, reduce errors, and free up time to focus on what's most important, our customers, members, suppliers, and associates. Secondly, digitalization, which is our great ally. By digitalizing our processes, we connect more efficiently with our customers, better understanding their needs and expectations. This allows us to offer personalized and relevant experiences, strengthening our relationship with each of them. And finally, simplification. Complexity is the enemy of efficiency. Simplifying our internal and external processes not only makes our operations smoother, but also improves the experience of our customers, partners, suppliers, and associates. Our deep-rooted culture is crucial to continue to serve our customers the way they want to be served. We continue to offer low and affordable prices as we know customers prioritize value, access, and affordability. In the second quarter, we delivered a 6.4% total revenue growth, impacted by the Easter flip, with operating income growing 6.8% and an EBITDA growth of 7.7%. This quarter, we outpaced and touched self service same store sales growth by 200 basic points, maintaining our momentum. Continuous investments in price gap and more recent price per central efforts, which increased 120 basic points in the quarter along with a customer value proposition that is constantly evolving and behind these results versus the industry. I will give more detail about our sales results in a minute. During this second quarter of the year, our e-commerce GMB grew 19%, driven by on-demand and marketplace, allowing us to continue leading in omnichannel. Overall, we continue progressing across all of our verticals to continue strengthening our ecosystem. This quarter, we launched two new initiatives announced on Walmart Day related to the knowledge of our customers, our digital connection program and Walmart Luminate. Raul will further explain later on, but let me just mention that the first one is key to continue increasing loyalty and stickiness by expanding our customer behavior knowledge and creating a stronger connection with them by offering tailored experiences, customized marketing efforts, and helping them to have a better decision-making process. The second one, Walmart Luminate, 
work as a collaborative tool for our suppliers, which will help us take all that knowledge from customers, make it available for our suppliers, and allowing them to make stronger decisions on their advertising strategies. As we said in our Walmex day, when suppliers and merchants have access to the same robust omni data, great things happen. So let's review our performance during the second quarter of 2024. Please consider that when I am talking about results in Central America, I am referring to figures on a constant currency basis. During the quarter, consolidated revenue grew 6.4%, Mexico and Central America deliver a 7.1% and 3.2% growth, respectively. Q2 results should be seen in context of Q1 due to the calendar effects and phasing of government subsidies in Mexico. Overall, H1, we posted very solid consolidated results with growth of 8.1% with Mexico posting 9.1% and CAM 5.9% and profit increasing faster than sales. Paulo will go through the financials later on this presentation. Now let's review sales performance in Mexico. During the quarter, same store sales grew 5.5%, out of which 3.7% came from increasing ticket and 1.8% from traffic. Our multi-format operation allow us to serve customers across different demographics and shopping occasions. For the first time since the format conversion, we had Walmart Express as the leading same-store sales growth format. The efforts and investment that we share with you since last year regarding fresh quality, look and feel, and assortment are paying off. We continue to see healthy growth rates among all of our formats, and we are glad to see all our formats outpacing and that self-service same store sales. In terms of regions, growth was broad based across all of them with North delivering slightly lower yet solid growth when compared to other three regions. Regarding merchandise divisions, growth was driven by general merchandise and food and consumables, the format aided by hot sale. As in recent quarters, all of our merchandise division posted positive growth year over year. Raúl will expand on the operational highlights later in his presentation. Now let's look at our performance compared to the market. As I mentioned earlier, this quarter we grew ahead of self-service and clubs market measured by Antat by 200 basic points, maintaining momentum. We are very glad to see a strong positive trend since our customers continue appreciating our value proposition and rewarding us with their loyalty. Efforts in price perception, like communication through media, strengthening our brand and focusing key value items, along with our price gap and other levers, are key variables to ensure our customers recognize the previous efforts and investment made to expand the price gap. We will continue to listen to our customers to come up with new and better ways to serve them as there are still things we can improve to continue growing faster than our competitors. Now I will pass the word to Raul for him to go through the operational highlights and afterwards I will return to comment on Central America, store opening and ESG. Thank you, Ignacio, and hello everyone. I'm glad to be sharing with you our key operational highlights for the first time. Let me go through some of them. We continue focused on our core business to win in discount and offer value to the customers that visit us every day through our different channels to help them save money and live better. Price perception remains a priority for us. This quarter, through all the levers Ignacio shared before, we were able to increase it by 120 basis points with growth across most of our formats. We stayed focused on the corner store of our business, our stores and clubs. These have always been our main priority and we'll keep putting our energy and resources into them to ensure we continue to create value and offer products at a price our customers can afford and to maintain their trust and loyalty. During the second quarter, our same store sales growth was led by Walmart Express. We have been communicating in previous quarters our efforts in terms of improving look and feel assortment and fresh through a clustering strategy in some of our stores of both Walmart Supercenters and Express formats. Let me give you two examples of this. 
We have been transforming our bakeries in our premium clusters in Walmart Express and new super centers to improve quality, freshness, and taste. As we know, that's something our customers seek. This is something that it's still rolling out, but we already seen promising results. The second example is our different country fairs that we know that Walmart Express target customers value. This quarter, we hosted the French fair for two months with original products from French, such as cheeses, wine, champagne, among others, with encouraging results and good acceptance. Other seasonal events during the quarter were Mother's Day, Plan Verano, and Ola de Calor, all of them with relevant sales results. In Bodega, for example, Ola de Calor had over 20% growth versus last year with water and isotonic categories increasing above 50%. Our brands continue to be a key element of our strategy. This quarter penetration increased close to 40 basis points versus the same quarter last year, mainly driven by perishable and home categories. The percentage of customers that buy at least one item from our brand, which is close to half of them, also increased over 20 basis points versus last year in self-service. This quarter, we hosted our hot sale event. We had close to 63 million customers during the event with an increase in omnichannel NPS of more than 240 basis points, which reflects our efforts to better serve our customers and members. Sam's Club was our top performer format during our hot sale event with a double digit growth in total sales, reflecting the trust and loyalty of our members and the value and benefits of their membership. Now, let's look at e-commerce performance as we continue to lead in Omnichannel, making sure we have the best service, prices, and products for our customers and members, no matter how they want to shop with us. During the second quarter, e-commerce GNV grew 19%, representing 7.8% of total GNV in Mexico. As in previous quarters, on-demand and marketplace were the main growth drivers. In our brick and mortar business, Walmart Express is showing growth sales momentum on on-demand by achieving double-digit quarterly growth following difficult banner conversion period. Also, in May, aiming to continue improving service levels for our SAMS members, we launch a pilot test in three clubs of Pronto, our 90-minute delivery service, which based on the initial results, we plan to roll it out during the third quarter. Walmart Pass Evolution has been positive. This quarter, members increased 33% versus the same quarter last year. Recent analysis shows that Walmart Pass members buys 25% more after acquiring our membership, driven by increased frequency and higher number of items bought. Regarding extended assortment, our marketplace grew 26% versus Q2 of 2023, with both the number of marketplace SKUs and sellers increasing around 60%. Like in previous years, Hot Sale was a fully omnichannel event where our customers and members were able to access our great deals through all of our channels. E-commerce penetration during the event was 14% with a 52% increase in e-commerce visits versus last year's event. We continue working on enhancing our e-commerce capabilities. We have shared with you the implementation of our Glass platform across our different formats. It was already implemented in our two Walmart formats, Supercenter and Express, and we just finished deploying it in Bodega. Glass is our front-end platform, leveraging US technology that allows us to set the basis and unify the technology behind all of our formats that will help us grow the business significantly. In addition, we are also fine tuning our platforms back end with the implementation of the Walmart Commerce platform, which will allow us to scale significantly the size of our marketplace with local and cross-border sellers and improve user experience through our search capabilities, among others. I am very excited about what the future holds for our e-commerce given all the effort we're putting in it. Moving 
to our new business and our strategic priority to become the ecosystem of choice. Byte reached 13.7 million active users, more than doubling the 6.3 million active users from the same quarter last year, adding 400,000 users in the quarter. This quarter, we launched different new top-up price points, like 60 pesos, 120 pesos, and 230 pesos offers, which helped us to increase revenue. On to financial solutions. This quarter, we dispersed more than 150,000 credits, 30% more than the same quarter last year. Walmart Connect delivered a 23% revenue growth versus last year, implementing 24% more campaigns versus quarter two of last year. On our health business, this quarter we sold 600,000 health memberships as customers increase their understanding of the value we offer. Finally, as Ignacio mentioned before, this quarter we launched Walmart Luminate in our digital connection program. Our digital connection program called Walmart Beneficios and Bodega Rara Beneficios provides our customers with a personalized shopping experience, facilitates the integration with our verticals, and offers significant savings with non-commercial allies as well as with Byte. It creates a unique experience for our customers according to their shopping habits. To enroll, the customer needs to register a cell phone number and provide the same number each time he or she makes a physical or digital purchase. For us, this program will be crucial for getting to know even better our customers and better understand the impact that each vertical has across the whole ecosystem. On the other hand, Luminate seeks to better understand client expectations, helping us and our suppliers create more effective commercial strategies together. This tool will provide data analytics regarding category penetration, purchase frequency, buying admissions, decision making, cross promotions, among other things through historical data of the past two years. It will only register purchasing trends and not personal data. Luminate was previously launched in Walmart US in 2021 where many of our Walmart biggest suppliers in that country are seeing benefits from using Luminate's business intelligence tools. Here, it will be initially available only in Mexico, and we will provide access to all suppliers regardless of its size through a corresponding subscription. We are very happy with the outlook of these two initiatives that will help us better understand our customers and be able to offer them improved solutions according to their needs while helping them save money and live better. Now, I will leave you again with Ignacio so he can comment about Central America, store openings, and ESG before going through our financial results. It was a pleasure to share our quarterly highlights with you for the first time, and I will be glad to answer any questions in our live Q&A tomorrow morning. Thank you, Raul. Now, moving to Central America. Again, please consider that we are referring to figures on a constant currency basis. In Q2, Central America reported a 2.6% same store growth compared to the same period in 2023, mainly driven by volume growth. We saw softer growth in Costa Rica, partly impacted by deflation. We are implementing actions to capture high volume growth in the second half of the year. During Q2, we opened our 900th store, opening six new stores in the quarter. Our price gap also continued improving, reinforcing our value proposition and commitment to help our customers save money and live better. Also, we expanded e-commerce operations to 20 additional stores and increasing 50 basic points, our e-commerce sales penetration. During the quarter, e-commerce reported an 80% growth compared to the same period of last year driven by a triple-digit order volume growth. We continue developing our ecosystem in the region. During Q2, Walmart Connect doubled its income and number of advertises versus last year. These actions contributed to a 3.2% total sales growth, excluding FXFX. Paulo will go into CAM financial details later on. 
Lastly, as we have reviewed our operations in Central America, we believe that these businesses are all financially strong, are well placed to serve their customers and communities, and continue to have a significant growth potential, which is best realized under continued Walmex ownership. Now, let's talk about new store growth. During the quarter, we opened 25 new stores, 19 in Mexico, 5 in Costa Rica, and 1 in Guatemala. New stores' contribution to consolidated sales growth was 1.7% of the quarter, ahead of the guidance given in the Walmex day, which was between 1.4% to 1.6%. Most of the openings were from bodegas smaller format and a new supercenter in Jalisco, with the new premium bakery Raúl mentioned before. We will accelerate openings in the coming quarters, aligned with the goal we share in the Walmex date of opening more than 1,000 stores in the next five years. To finalize, we continue deeply committed to our ESG principles, making continuous efforts to ensure that our operations and initiatives align with these values. I'd like to share some of our quarterly highlights in these areas. Building on our aim to support local businesses, we recently celebrated the second edition of the Growth Summit in Mexico. These initiatives exemplified our commitment to fostering an inclusive environment that offers opportunities to Mexican companies of all sizes. We are proud to have expanded our supplier network with the participation of 350 companies this year. On sustainability, our efforts across our organization are recognized and demonstrated by our top position in the Mundo Ejecutivo's ranking of the top 50 most sustainable companies in Mexico. We also remain committed to supporting our communities in time of need. In response to the devastation caused by Tropical Storm Alberto, we have donated over 7 tons of in-kind aid to the states of Nuevo León and Tamaulipas. We look forward to continue our ESG efforts and sharing our progress with you. Thanks again for joining us today. I am glad to be able to share these results with you for the first time, and I'll be happy to see you all tomorrow in our live Q&A. Now, I leave you with Paulo, who will cover the financial results for the quarter. Thanks, Ignacio, and good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us today to review the results for the second quarter, 2024. As usual, I will start by covering Mexico results and then I will cover Central America. So let's look at Mexico's results. As you heard from Ignacio, total revenue grew 7.1%, driven by 5.5% same store sales growth. As in previous quarters, and in line with the temporary PL reshape we have mentioned before, gross margin expanded by 100 basis points, partially offsetting. SGNA increase of 130 basis points as a percentage of sales. We'll go through the gross margin and SGNA breakdown in just a moment. Again, we are able to improve gross margin not at the expenses of our price perception and competitiveness in the market. Operating income grew 6.2% and EBITDA margin expanded by 10 basis points to 10.6% best-in-class levels. Also, as mentioned previously, we can't look to quarter two results in isolation due to the calendar effects and phasing from government subsidies. Therefore, in H1, we posted strong results with 9.1% total sales growth in EBITDA growing faster than sales at 9.9%. Let me now expand on gross margin. During the quarter, we had a benefit of 100 basis points, driven mainly by improved commercial margin, contribution from new business and e-commerce, and supply chain benefits. Improvements in our brick and e-commerce commercial margins contributed with 40 and 20 basis points, respectively, mainly driven by improved general merchandise assortment management and lower last mile costs, in addition to the 10 basis points from supply chain benefits. Our new businesses, such as Walmart Connect, Byte and Financial Services, which continue positively contributing to our p provided 20 basis points improvement on gross margin. All these 
contributed to our gross margin expansion, reaching 24.1%. Now, let's review SGNA. We increased 55 basis points run expenses as labor costs, remodels, and utilities increases were not sufficiently offset by operational efficiencies. In parallel, we continue investing behind strategic growth priorities, notably new stores, new businesses, tech and e-com, as well as enhancing our associate value proposition. All the above-mentioned growth investments impacted expenses by 75 basis points. Now, let's review Central America results. Please consider that on this slide, I will refer to figures on a constant currency basis. Total revenues increased 3.2% versus last year, driven by a 2.6% same-store growth driven by volume. Overall growth was impacted by Easter Flip and softer Costa Rica performance, the latter still impacted by deflation. Gross margin improving 10 bips against last year, closing at 24.3% of revenues. We continue to reinforce value proposition through price investments fully offset by lower supply chain costs and Walmart Connect. SGNA represented 18.3% of revenues, increasing 60 basis points compared to quarter 2, 2023, mainly impacted by growth investments such as marketing, remodels, new verticals acceleration, and lower sales. The aforementioned results and other income benefits resulted in operating income growth of 10.6%, an EBITDA margin of 9.1%, expanding 40 basis points versus the same period of last year. Overall, Central America reported a solid H1 with total revenue increasing 5.9%, achieving a 7.4% EBITDA growth with a 9.5% margin. At consolidated level, total revenue increased 6.4%, with new stores contributing 1.7% to total growth, ahead of our grindance provided at our Walmax day. Gross margin expanded by 80 basis points to 24.1%, and SGNA grew 14.7%. Operating income grew 6.8% year over year, with a 7.9% operating income margin. Finally, EBITDA margin expanded 20 basis points to 10.4%, while consolidated net income grew 9.3%, resulting in a 5.5% net margin. In the first half of 2024, we posted a strong set of results with consolidated growth ahead of the market increasing 8.1%, whilst reporting a 9% EBITDA growth with a 10.6% margin. And now, moving to the balance sheet. Cash increased 7.7% versus second quarter 2023. We will see the sources and uses of cash in the next slide. Inventories grew 13.1%, above sales growth due to preparation for seasonal summer campaigns, back to school, and lower sales on certain categories during hot sale. And finally, accounts payable grew above sales, reporting a 16.1% year-over-year growth. In the last 12 months, we generated 89.1 billion pesos in cash. We returned it 33.4 billion pesos to our shareholders as dividends. And operating our share buyback program, we repurchased shares worth close to a billion pesos. We invested 31.5 billion pesos in high return projects to continue 
deploying our strategy and accelerating growth whilst paying 17.9 billion pesos in taxes. Our working capital for the period required 1.5 billion pesos due to the increase in inventories mentioned before. All in all, our cash position finished the quarter at 48.5 billion pesos. To finalize, I would like to emphasize the three key messages of the quarter. Number one, we kept our growth momentum and expanded our growth gap versus the market with a 200 basis points growth above Antad's self-service same-store sales, whilst delivering best-in-class returns. Number two, strong performance of new stores ahead of the guidance given. As we are about to accelerate openings, we make sure investments are done with discipline. And number three, we continue strengthening our ecosystem that will improve customer knowledge with the launches of Digital Connect program and Walmart Luminate. All in all, I am happy to say that we ended the first half of the year with good momentum and a strong set of results. We will continue investing behind our strategy and listening to our customers to keep winning their preference and creating value to all our stakeholders. As always, thanks for your interest in our company. We will make ourselves available to answer the questions you may have tomorrow at 7.15 a.m. on our live Q&A. You can reach our IR team if you have any doubt concerning how to connect to the call. Good morning, everyone. I'm Salvador Villaseñor, responsible for investor relations at Walmart. And I want to thank you for joining for in our live Q&A session following our second quarter earnings results published yesterday evening. Uh, today with me is Ignacio Caride, President and CEO of Walmix, uh, uh, Raúl Quintana, our COO, Pablo García, our CFO. We will have one hour to go through, you know, through your questions, having a hard stop at 8.15. Uh, and now I will pass over to Ignacio for his initial remarks. Please, Ignacio. Thank you, Salvador. Welcome and thanks for joining us today. Uh, before starting this Q&A, I'd like to briefly mention that our vision remains the same. It remains relevant for our customers, both in Mexico and Central America. Our goal is to maintain our leadership in Mexico and Central America as a preferred omni ecosystem to help customers save money and live better. While placing a higher emphasis on strengthening automation, digitalization, and simplification. To deliver on this vision, we have a strategy rooted in three key pillars winning discount, leading omni, and become the ecosystem of choice and four enablers, customer centricity, best talent, technology, and supply chain. All of these empowered by our purpose, culture, and values. Today, we, are excited, uh, we have an excited opportunity in the horizon to double the business even faster than before. I'm positive about this business and what we can achieve. Thank you again for, for all of your continued support and interest in our business. Now let's open to questions. We will now start the Q&A session. If you have a question, please press the question button in the browser. Please make sure you are not in full screen mode to see the button. The first question is from Rodrigo Alcantara from UBS. Please go ahead. Hola, Hi, uh, uh, <laughs> Hi, Ignacio, Hi, Paulo. Paulo. Uh, uh, Salvador, uh, nice to, to see you again. Um, uh, guess a, a very simple, a very one. simple I mean, one. I mean, just curious on your initial, initial requirements, requirements about business about simplification. Business simplification. If, you can, if you can explain to explain us, to us uh, what uh, do you what mean, mean by that, by and, and um, precisely what are the areas, are the areas of, 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 of opportunities, opportunities for, for, for Walmax that you that you spotted here, Ignacio? And that would be it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rodrigo. Um, simplification, ba basically, it's 
well, how we feel about our business is we want to do th things as simple as possible, as fast as possible. And, uh, and our feeling is our complexity is the enemy of efficiency. So simplifying our, all our internal and external processes, it's not only make our operationals smoother, but improve our, the experience for our customers, for our suppliers and associates. And the way to simplify the way we, we operate is using more technology, more automation, and uh, eliminating processes that are not, uh, not needed anymore. The worst thing we can do is try to uh, improve a process that is actually not needed. So we're putting a lot of focus on reviewing the way we do things in order to simplify uh, uh, as much as possible uh, so we can you know, move faster. I see. And as we make progress on this front, I mean, can we expect profitability to improve, I mean, on the margin side, or would be more like on the approach to commercial side with customers, just to understand the, the benefits of this? Yeah, I think it it will have an impact in the in the way we work, and it's a, it's a cultural change. So it will allow us to have a slimmer operation, faster and more efficient. Um, basically, what we're trying to do is operate with with less. And, and run our business with less and in a more simple way. So you, you can expect benefits all, all across, the, all across the, the, the business. I see. Thank you. Thank you very much for your question. Our next question is from Mr. Antonio Hernandez from Actinver. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning. Congrats on, on your results and, and, thank, and thanks for taking my question. Uh, my question is regarding the new businesses. You mentioned that, that, that you could post some expansion because of that. Uh, and, and congrats on that. As, as you are aware of, I'm, I'm quite confident in, in some of these businesses. Could you please give some uh, light into which of these businesses are you more up it in the in the very short term and maybe what what do you expect going forward thanks yeah thank you um so, so we're very happy with with the pace our new businesses are, are growing mainly mainly bite with with 13.7 million customers and and again beating beating the market on on, on new customers um our um, Walmart Connect as well performing very well and and contributing to our to our bottom line in, in our PNL and our health membership and regarding all of that we also launch uh, our uh, Walmart beneficios and Bodega Rara beneficios that will help us integrate the whole ecosystem and give us much more information about how customers are interacting with with our ecosystem how each one of our of our new businesses are. Um, generating this interaction with our stores and bringing more traffic to our stores so uh we we are starting to see a lot of positive results in 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 how these uh, these new businesses have have impact in our pnl so we are happy with with the strategy how it's unfolding um launching beneficios or uh in walmart and bodega is a, is a key milestone for us because it will generate a lot of information of a lot of customers that in the past we knew nothing about it because they were paying in cash. Um, and that information will, will allow us and, 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 and give us the opportunity to generate better insights. With those insights, we will be able to fuel again our, our business and we can contribute with that information to our suppliers so that together we can, we can uh, have a positive impact on how we build our business. I don't know if Paulo want to. Yeah. No, I, I think it's enough. And maybe in us, just to to clarify to the people when you talk about benefits, also mm. we've been talking about digital connection program. So it's, it's the same it's, thing. It's, it's the same thing, so that uh, you just don't get confused. But uh, nothing to add what Inasio said. Okay, so this was more than a one of you are expecting this type of benefit going forward, I guess. Uh, as uh, um, as our as our ecosystems unfold and with all the launches we're doing and the improvements we're doing, yes, we expect to uh, the ecosystem to keep contributing to our business. Perfect. Thanks, Alona. Have a nice day. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Thank you very much for your question. Our next question is from Mr. Andrew Rubin from Morgan Stanley. Please. 
go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks very much for the question, uh, Ignacio. Congratulations again. Uh, was hoping you could dig in a bit more on the performance by Banner. Uh, we see Walmart Express uh, exceeding the company average for the first time in a while. Uh, on the other hand, Walmart uh, below average. So is that an issue of geographic location, um, exposure to, you mentioned some of the government benefits, just trying to disaggregate the, rel the, um, the relative trends between the banners. Thank you. Thank you. I will let Raul answer, answer your question. Sure. Th thank you, Andrew. I, I think uh, from a portfolio standpoint, we remain very focused on our customer value proposition, Andrew, for each format. So in, let me start with Bodega, and then I'll jump into Walmart Express and Walmart Supercenter. So in Bodega, we continue to focus on our price leadership and our expansion model so that we can continue to bring the value of Bodega to more customers and more Andreas across Mexico. On the case of Walmart Express and Walmart Supercenter, uh, like we've mentioned in the past, we're uh, in a cluster strategy to better shape you know, our performance for our AB customers. And we're very happy with some of the progress that we're making. We've improved assortment in some of our stores in this cluster, premium stores for Walmart Express and Supercenters. We've improved as well our quality and our fresh products. And we're also you know, revamping our service model so that we can better tailor to our customers what they need. And we've seen some good uptake as well on, on our fresh. Um, we've also changed some of our look and feel for our customers. And we've seen some good progress and some early signs. And I think that's also translating into the results that you see in Walmart Express. Walmart Supercenters, we continue uh, to focus as well. On, on the breadth of our assortment and bringing the, the value that the customers need, and as well improving the service that we want our customers to receive in super centers. And we feel good about the progress that we're making as well there. And in Sam's Club, you know, the treasure hunt items and the innovation and the value the members see in the membership is also paying off. So I think the focus that we're putting on the customer value proposition on each format and making sure that we have a clear direction is helping us achieve the results. Great, thank you. Thank you very much for your question. Our next question is from Mr. Alvaro Garcia from BTG Pactual. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks. <clears throat> thanks for uh, the space for questions. Uh, my question is on gross margin in Mexico specifically. Uh, you mentioned that that sort of the expansion was not at the expense of price perception or competitiveness in the market, but your commercial margin did inch 40 basis points higher in that breakdown you gave. And thanks for that breakdown, by the way. Um, so I was wondering if you could maybe talk about pricing into the second half of the year. We're obviously in a much more favorable environment. Your suppliers are clearly not passing price year to date. So you know, um, just any commentary on, on, on that, you know, competitiveness would be great. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Uh, hola, Ricardo. Hola, Alvaro. Thanks for, for your question. Indeed. So first, indeed, I'd like you to reassure on that fact that we are increasing your gross margin without jeopardizing our competitiveness. And believe us, that is our mantra and it's our everyday what we're trying to achieve. Indeed, to the, comp the composition of the gross margin improvement, let me first take, talk about the other, th the other elements, and then I will come back to the, to the directly to your question. I think it's important to, to understand the contribution that the new businesses are already giving to the, the gross margin uh, progression. So you see this, this quarter, another 20 basis points, as well as with improvements that we've been doing in efficiencies in e-commerce, giving another ones. So that is a significant chunk of a gross margin improvement that you see versus what we have done in the, the past. In particular, the former is something that our competitors uh, don't, uh, don't have in order to help their uh, profitability in their shape of their P&L, as you can see it. Um, they're, of course, always efficient on the supply chain. I will not spend much time there. I will go directly to your question around the 40 basis points and around the commercial margin. First thing to, to say, and then, and then Raul can elaborate a bit more on that if needed. Actually, all, we're maintaining our price gap and then improving our price perception. So that's constantly our focus. We've been talking about to you in the past that our need to improve our price perception because our equation in terms of what we were investing in the in the market, so to speak, 
and the perception from our customers was not the right one. In the last 18 months to two years, we have put a lot of effort on that by working on levers that we've always talked about. Here, of course, depending on the banner, they might be different, but they will range from, of course, the, the price gap or the, or the KVIs. They will range with the communication, the penetration private brands, quality of fresh. They're all important elements for the, for the, um, for the price perception. In this particular case, in the quarter, as we alluded to, so we actually did just a much better management of the catalog, particularly in the general merchandise. And the better management of catalog means in terms of the actually how we buy, what we buy, but us as well, what we liquidate. And therefore, that actually we don't have necessarily so much uh, um, assortment that we actually then need to, to liquidate. If you look at it from that perspective, you can generate it efficient, and we are not putting at all our competitiveness at risk. Uh, and I think you could expect that going forward to the outlook for the H2. I don't know um, if you want to add anything, no, I, I think you covered it. I think our, our baseline and our core business maintains no strong, and, and we feel good about our commercial margins on what we're delivering to the customers. And like Paolo mentioned, I think you're starting to see the benefits of the ecosystem and what that's contributing to the, to the gross margin effect. Great, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your question. Our next question is from Felipe Casimiro from Bradesco. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks for, for taking my question. Uh, I wanted to explore just the launch of the, the Glass platform. Uh, my my curiosity is on how much this this new front end uh, platform could unlock e-commerce growth and and what categories are you particularly seeing that you can see a, a, a stronger growth and and in, in still on this do you anticipate any stronger marketing efforts to bring more traffic to your to your e-commerce platform? That's it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so. As, as as we told everyone, you know, we've been telling uh, uh, in the past, we are in the process of changing the whole structure of our and the whole technology of our e-commerce uh, platforms and and the technology w that we use to serve our customers in in e-commerce. Uh, mainly migrating into what we call WCP's Walmart Commerce Platform is our own our own platform uh, that uh, that it's uh, that it was built in the US and we're bringing that into different countries uh, like Canada and, and Mexico Central America and eventually Chile as well um, glass is part of that glass is the front end WCP is the back end and we're process of migrating all of that what what you can expect with with all of this is that eventually uh, in, in in the in the midterm we're gonna be exactly on the same technology platform as the US, so that will allow us to have the same the same usability and the same uh, and the same uh, um, site as them that is much more advanced than the ones that we have now. We already started the process of migrating that. Glass was the first part that is the front end that it helps the customer navigate easily our sites, uh, and now we are also in the process of migrating the backend with with WCP. Actually, uh, this week we turned on already traffic to one percent to start doing the first the first test. Um, this will put us into parity uh, into with with the rest of our competitors regarding e-commerce. Um, there's there's not secret sauce there. You can use our site in the U.S. That's exactly what you can expect here in in, in Mexico in terms of technology. Um, it's it's a big effort from our part. Uh, but we believe is is a, is a right choice, and that also once we are uh, connected with this technology, uh, it will allow us to um, offer to the Mexican and, and Central American customers all the all, most of the assortment that we have available in the U.S. That's more than four hundred thousand, uh, four sorry, four hundred million items listed in the marketplace in the U.S. So we'll unlock the cross border business for us. Um, so that's that's what we are in the process of, um, and and starting to see the benefits of that. And, and just to complement, we just finished the glass migration, Ignacio in Bodega. Yeah, 
And uh, as you know, we already had it in Walmart Express and Walmart Supercenters. Bodega, we just finished in this quarter. And we're starting to see early signs of good progress and good customer adaptation on that. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your question. Our next question is from Mr. Bob Ford from Bank of America. Please go ahead. You there? Our next question is from Ms. Renata Cabral from City. Please go ahead. Hi. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for taking my question and congrats, Inacio, on your new position. So my question is related to the financial solutions. Um, during the, the Walmax day, you, the company mentioned a series of initiatives. I wonder if you can give us some color, uh, especially about the development of credit score system and the open platform. Uh, and more than that, if you can share with us the ambition in, in this line, in the financial solutions, if you intend to make a further uh, partnership with other banks or to become a bank in the future, just to understand uh, where Walmax wants to, to achieve. Thank you. Thank you, Renata. Um, yes, uh, so we are very confident with that uh, that cash uh, that, that it will represent our turn point for Kashi and the whole ecosystem once we we open uh, we, we migrate to Open Loop. Um, regarding the launch of Open Loop, we are uh, targeting now Q4 um, to to release the initial Open Loop capabilities. Unfortunately, the launch has been postponed due to a combination of Unexpected requests from regulators and some delays from the development part. Um, we we are very careful uh, on what we are building and what we are launching um, because it's, it's very sensitive. We've been we are going to be handling other people's money, uh, so we don't want to take any risk here. Um, so uh, we're being very thoughtful on on, on this. Uh, unfortunately, it has uh, we we've been having some delays. Uh, but we are targeting now uh, to launch s sometime around Q4. Um, hopefully, we won't have any more delays on this. Uh, but we are still very confident that this this will change uh, uh, for for the positive for our customers in the whole ecosystem. Maybe just to then build to other question you were talking about the credit uh, scoring. We are will continue working on that, which is an element that we said in the past, Renata, which is an important as an additional information that will help the people that will work with us, the third parties, normally a bank or a or actually a, a fintech company that will want to put their balance sheet to work in order to facilitate credit to our customers. That's an important element. What we've talked about, what Inasi was talking about, about Walmart Beneficio, Bodega Beneficio, or the digital connection program that we just started, where we're getting the phone number of the customer. Is this something that in the in the future periods will give us increased data about the customer, the behavior, what do they shop, how much do they actually spend on a weekly basis that will be able to strengthen the credit scoring that we are building. This doesn't happen, as you can imagine, Renata, one day to the other. So this is a couple of months investing on, on this one, but it's something that we are quite positive about that can unlock potential in our ability to provide credit to the our Andreas of um, that buy on us on a daily day, on a daily basis. Yeah. Uh, that's great. Thanks so much, Paul and Nacio. Welcome. Welcome. Gracias. Obrigado. Thank you very much for your question. Our next question is from Mr. Ben Thoreau from Barclays, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, good morning and uh, thanks for taking uh, my question and the time for that. Um, just wanted to follow up a little bit on, on some of the investments you're doing and as we look at like uh, the general uh, expense uh, line and uh, obviously the sequential increase here, but also the year over year increase uh, was quite meaningful in the quarter. It was more meaningful even as in, for, in first quarter. So just wanted to understand from like these investment needs, the initiatives you're you're boosting, 
how much um, how much should we expect going forward as a boost to the general expense just as a percentage of sales because it kind of went up from one q into two q and clearly the the absolute piss amount that you're spending seems to be significantly more elevated so just wanted to understand what the run rate of that is for the next couple of quarters hi ben thanks for your for your question so i think when you looked at the expenses and as we've been talking in in the past I think in particular, the biggest expenses that you're seeing in our PNL and you continue to see this year, less so in the, in the future, will be the labor costs. And, um, and the labor costs, because of the increases that you all know that we have had in the last couple of years, were at 20% average rate of minimum wages. We've always said to you, with, it's not that we have a lot of people actually paying minimum wages because that's not the fact. But as you can imagine, across the organization, you're in the operations, you have lots of levels. And as you push minimum wages, you have to push all the levels and the salary bands. And of course, that tends to impact all the population that, uh, that we have. That said, we had also specifically said on purpose and intentional that we wanted to make an investment in our people catching up in terms of our position versus the market and to pay the people the right money, which actually allows us to reduce the, the turnover and rotation that actually we used to have levels above 70%. As you know, now we, we've been public about that, around 35%. Uh, On top, additional to that, we always have investments to run the business, to remodeling, cost of doing business like electricity that is higher than it was in the in the, in the past because also the even the renewable energy has not been able to have the cost that we have seen in the, in the past, and our investments, and we have to balance all that. As a result of that, we've been expressive uh, talking about uh, the fact that temporary reshaping of the PNL between the the gross margin and SGNA. I want to say repeat. I already said it to Alvar, but I wanted to say it again. We do so, but not at the expenses of competitors. We do so not at the expenses of our price cap or our price perception, believe us as on that one. And therefore, what we've been building with the ecosystem that we've been building with the verticals contribution, with Connect, with the Byte, also the financial services that to some extent start also contributing to that, and efficiency that we generate, are sometimes the way we buy, sometimes in the supply chain efficiencies, are helping that. Looking forward to, to your question. I think looking forward and where we see that the minimum wage is going the next couple of years, Claudia has been, Shaiban has been, the new president has been open about that. She wants to make the two and a half times the the, the basic basket, which is roughly up to 10, 10%. I think with that and all the initiatives that we are taking in to drive automation in the business, we believe that therefore then we'll be able to see or leverage in the, the expenses. I think in the short term, we've been open short term, so meaning 18 months period or so, we have been open that uh, you might not see all this leverage in the, our expenses because delivering efficiency is on top to offset this, whilst also investing to grow well ahead of the market. Um, sometimes it's a, a not difficult boat to land in the short term. A easy boat to land in the short term. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your question. Our next question is from Ms. Irma Scars from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Um, just two quick questions um, on on the expense front, I think you answered it um, very clearly. I, I was just curious that as you roll out the benefits program, is there a cost attached to that initially in the in the startup phase? I mean, over time, I would imagine that you get benefits out of it as you continue to learn more about the customer and you even monetize it to some extent through the Luminate program. But I was just curious if if you initially sort of see an expense attached to that, um, that we should just work into our numbers. Um, and then um, I was also curious if you could share anything about, uh, it's obviously very exciting uh, for you to be able to have that, um, I guess, single customer view or this unique customer view across the different channels. Um, what's your starting point, just in terms of, you ma mentioned that you often, you don't have identified sales in the offline ch channel. Um, what's your starting point and where do you think you could get to over time um, 
in terms of identifying customers. And um, and then, sorry, <laughs> final question, but hopefully one to the benefit of everyone. Um, just if you could make any comments about consumption outlook into the back half um, uh, as we're coming out of the sort of election period, etc., um, would be super helpful. Thank you so much. Yeah, so let me just answer <coughs> very briefly to the first one. Irma, no, it's it's minor investment that we make into the people that are working on, on it. So we actually, in any margin, we actually not giving a lot of benefits that the people can cash back. It's not about so so that one. So minimal investment. Talking about the program itself and the question, do you connect a unique customer? I will pass the baton in a, to the to Ignacio to talk about that, and I will come back to the co uh, question on the outlook. Yes, and um, important here to understand what what we build with Beneficios is a set of benefits that are given by third parties to our customers. We, uh, you know, we identify that our customers are very valuable for other companies that that, that want to attract them. Uh, so, uh, in order not to break our EDLP uh, philosophy inside our stores, all the benefits are inside our ecosystem or with benefits from other companies like cinema tickets or discounts in coffee shops or or or, or with other brands so uh, it won't add up any cost it will give uh usable and and, and requested benefit for our customers that they can use and, and and the type of benefits we're offering will keep rotating so if some something is not working we will just change it for for something else um and let me say that our first initial numbers uh, on this were were very very good. Uh, we are we are happily surprised with how this is unfolding. So um, yeah, it it will it will help unfold and, and and connect the whole ecosystem and and give us much more information that we will use for credit scoring, for for relationship with suppliers, for advertising, or uh, to understand better our customers, to give them a better service. And regarding second half, Paolo, you want yeah, to take it? I can talk about the the, the second half. Even the way I, I like to answer that question, which uh, we get it often, is in two ways. One is in a long, around the long term, and the other one is in the short term. Right? I think on the on the long term, we remain very positive about Mexico and its potential. And you, some of you knows that they've. They've been uh, in contact uh, out with me sometimes on the on the road. That I keep saying since I've been here in Mexico, they keep the thing that that surprised me the most is actually Mexico, and I think the potential continues to be out there. What do you look at from what Mexico has been growing in in the past? The prospects of uh, near shoring, the fact that it's now the biggest exporter to the U.S. Sometimes the the relationship between U.S. and China and the space that they let gives to the Mexico. The investment have been make been made in Mexico and infrastructure most recently, so I think that you will continue to see the positive. I'm sure when you ask that question, you're looking more to the short term and what is going to happen <laughs> in, in H2 and uh, so H1 ne next uh, year. Yes, what typically let me say two things here. One, we have seen in the past typically in, in the elections, the last two elections, there have been a slowdown in H2 versus H1. But it's important to say the last two elections that were done, actually there was a change of government in the part, which is not the case this time around. So therefore, I'm not sure if we can look really to the past to infer the future. It's true, though, that we actually start seeing some of the economic factors that you all see, be it an, uh, employment, be it actually the, the growth, be it actually the, in this case, reflecting in the in the traffic in our store and in any consumption we saw a little bit at the end of june and early in early july a little bit of a slowdown in traffic how these will unfold we'll have to see it's just too early to say you know that uh, it has been a bit erratic this h1 because with a lot of incentives pulled to the quarter one, one. and therefore driving a lot of the consumption in the quarter two, you didn't have the incentives, so people tended to spend most of that in the quarter one. The incentives or the subsidies from the government started now in July. So the first bimester was already given to the population up to the 19th of July. So let's see how that also helps uh, driving consumption in the 
amongst uh, our cons our consumers. Yeah, and let me build on on this. The second half, uh, it's typically a, a, a part of the year where we feel stronger, given given seasonality, where we are we are typically stronger than than, than the industry. So we're still we're still um, you know positive in our intentions, and uh, we need to wait and see about the macro about the macro, but. Uh, very we feel good Thank about you. our ability. We feel, Irma, we feel good about our ability to continue to win share in the back half yeah. of the year. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, and a long-term target of doubling the business faster than before. So. Thank you very much for your question. Our next question is from Mr. Froilan Mendez from J.P. Morgan. Please go ahead. Hello, everyone. Thank you for taking my question. I have two questions, if I may. The first one is on the long uh, term and the end goal that you have for the ad business. I mean, given the magnitude of the margins that this business usually command, what we see in other e-commerce players, do you expect to, to this to be a, a game changer to your margin outlook at some point? Or what could prevent you to see the same benefits that we see for pure e-commerce players from this type of business? And my second question was, is on the uh, on the price gap that increased versus peers. Can you expand a little bit on what were the key levers on on that gap increasing? Was it more on on private label efforts, uh, a longer summer campaign? If you could dig in into what drove that gap wider. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, the the first one uh, briefly on that. Indeed, we see a lot of potential. We are uh, completely open about that. Otherwise, we will not have said in our annual capital markets day where we said it that we we expect that to fourfold uh, in the next five years in terms. And we have announced uh, what's the revenue that we did in our Walmart uh, Connect or advertising business by roughly 150 million dollars. I'm rounding it at the end of last year. And I think that will be indeed a big contribution to our PL. We've always been saying that then we can decide taking that to the PL or actually take that to actually invest back in the in the business or combination of both. And investing back in the business might be continuing investing in the in pricing where we still see our areas of opportunity. We're almost pretty much reaching to the to the ceiling where we feel very comfortable, but there are a couple of categories here and there that we can put a bit more money and as well as investing behind uh, tech, e-commerce and, uh, and the new business, which therefore at the same time are contributing to the, to the whole ecosystem, as you know. So I think that's a, a lever. It's a competitive advantage that we, don't, we have because if you look at our competitors here and be it in Mexico and Central America, they don't have that size of the, the don't, don't don't have that type of business, and unless of course you're talking about the pure players, as you mentioned in your your question. So I think it's something that we can uh, continue unlocking and then use as a competitive advantage to to win in the marketplace. Okay, and uh, re regarding price gap, um, we're the commercial teams, both in self service and in Sam's Club, are are very focused on delivering the best value to the customers and to the members. And the way we achieve that is we focus on KVI items and we focus on product mixed in categories. And, and we understand from the customers what they need and what they want. And based on key value items and the mix of the categories, we have a strong um, customer value proposition to make sure that we're delivering, delivering the value that the customers expect from us. And in the case of Bodega, it's not only no, uh, a reasonable price perception or a price gap, but it's the price that the customer can afford. So we're very focused on the price that the customer can afford and delivering the key value items that the customers need and the value that they're looking for. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your question. Our next question is from Ms. Daniela Brethauer from HSBC. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for taking my question. I uh, just wanted to follow up on a comment made yesterday on the gross margin, Paulo. Um, 
you in the slide you show that there is 40 bips of gross margin improvement but then it says brick and mortar but i believe in your speech you mentioned that it was also brick and mortar and e-commerce that you saw an improvement in in the commercial margin so i just wanted to clarify if that's the case and also wanted to clarify if the improvement that you mentioned today in the last mile for e-commerce, if that's in supply chain or that's reflected in the others, because you did a bridge for gross margin. I thought that was very interesting, but I'm a, a just a little bit confused on the components there. Thank you. Yeah, so let me clarify in case I, I wasn't. So I think the gross margin progression is exactly as you, you have in the slide. So. We have out there 40 basis points for new businesses and e-commerce. Half of that is actually for new businesses, Connect, uh, Byte, and, and of the other verticals. The other one is actually efficiencies that we are improving in e-commerce, mostly related with efficiency that we're doing in the, in the last mile per se. So that is, that is one. The other one, which was also the question of um, Alvaro, was about the 40 basis points that we have in the commercial margin in, in what's called mostly the the brick, there actually is much about a much better management of the catalog of general merchandise. And when you say management of the catalog of general merchandise, means the way we buy the assortment that we buy and the way we actually sell it to avoid, of course, the fact that we then have to liquidate some of that uh, category or inventory if we didn't buy in the first place the, the right one. So I think that's the way you should look at it. And uh, in terms of the explanation, yeah, now it's it, it's clear. Thank you. And just a, a follow up question on um, well, we had the Copa America, and we're just gonna have the Olympics starting on on Friday. So I was wondering if that could provide any sort of tailwind momentum for the Q three sales performance or. It's just like the underlying macro environment that will dictate the performance. Yeah, in in the case of Copa America, when when Mexico plays, no, you do see a surge. Unfortunately, are we all laughing? We unfortunately all want to make a joke to Inés, but yeah, okay. Unfortunately, you know, Argentina probably had a surge in Argentina. We don't have a lot of Argentines living in Mexico. But we do see a surge when the Mexico team plays and when you know, they develop a, a good performance, we do see a surge. So as, as Mexico did not have a good performance, so we, we're not seeing that uplift that we wish we would have seen. In the case of the Olympics, uh, the Olympics are still kind of scattered from a, a follow a perspective in Mexico. So you will see some no sports more follow than others, but it's still uh, no lower in an impact base from a lift perspective. But we are promoting you no know, with partnerships uh, with the vendors in our stores, uh, you no know, the Olympics, so that we we make it front and center, so that the customers can feel the ambient and also you no know, get the some of the momentum. So not expecting a lot of the sales lift as we would see more on a soccer tournament that we will see from the Olympics. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your question. Our next question is from Mr. Ulises Argote from Santander. Please go ahead. Hi guys, thanks for the space uh, for, for questions uh, and, uh, and congrats on the results there. Uh, two quick ones from, from my side. I think the, the first one I wanted to do like a double click on the Central American margins. Um, so if you could expand a little bit on what uh, what were the, the drivers there of expansion and maybe how sustainable you see this uh, these trends going uh, going forward. Um, and then the second one on, on capital allocation, right? So there on the buybacks you mentioned, you've done uh, around a billion uh, in, in cashback already, uh, sorry, in, in buybacks already um your let's call it in kind of this initial steps in in bringing this into your uh, into your capital allocation strategy so um how do you feel about this how are you thinking of this part uh kind of going forward and have what have been your uh, your perceptions of how that works and how that fits with the overall uh kind of strategy you guys have thank you yeah just to, to on on those two thanks for the question Ulysses. so on on the central america margins if i just uh, 
separate it first. If you think just a gross margin, you saw a small progression there. And whilst we continue to invest in the price investments uh, there in order to reinforce our CVP, we're able to generate some efficiency, in particular in the, the supply chain. We are fully integrated supply chain in Central America with manufacturing, which actually sometimes allows us to get to some of those uh, these, those efficiencies. I think if you look to our PNL of in the margins of Central America, this particular quarter was also helped with some by one one off that we had in in our income that is also related with the uh, asset sales. I always say when we looked at the other income in a business like which includes various various topics, including one offs, includes drops of actually of um, of um, projects that we may have cancelled, includes uh, asset sales includes contribution donations. We actually sometimes have headwinds, sometimes we have tailwinds versus the prior year, and that is in both regions, Mexico, Central America. I always say that a business of our size should be able to accommodate uh, that. And what we have to do is to make sure that we reflect what we expect to see on that, on that line. On other income, in a way we establish our forecast, in a way we establish our decision-making in order to be able to be able to balance the long-term and the, and the short-term. I think to on the your question uh, on the share buyback in terms of the way we return capital to our shareholders, you most of you and also the investors have been saying your favorite way our favorite way of returning capital to shareholders is about investing in capex behind growth because of our re, re, high or best in class returns in on, on investments. So that's our priority way of returning uh, value to the to the shareholders. And that followed by the by the dividend. I think on a share buyback, it's it's a bit more tactical use of that, and then particularly it's more about the signal that sometimes we tend to to pass to the market the way we look at our share price, which we have a point of view where it stands today, but we leave it up to you and then investors to make your own mind around that. I think that's the way you should look at why we return capital to the, our shareholders. Great, that's perfect. Thanks so much for the color, guys. Thank you very much for your question. As a reminder, if you have a question, please press the question button in the browser. Please make sure you are not in full screen mode to see the button. Our next question is from Mr. Alejandro Fuchs from Itao. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, Ignacio. Paulo, Raul, Salvador, thank you for the space for questions. Uh, two very quick ones from my side. The first one on Byte, uh, I think uh, an, another quarter of, of strong growth. Uh, I wanted to ask you, w where would you see Byte, you know, maybe in one or two year period? And, and how do you see Byte adding to the overall core business? And the second one is maybe a follow up from Ulysses on, on Central America. Uh, how do you see the second half of the year semester sales under 3%? even though with a very good margin result, uh, anything that is worth highlighting for the second half in terms of maybe revamping up, you know, uh, the top line in Central America. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Alejandro. Um, so uh, we're very pleased with Byte results and we expect that to continue in the, in the near future, basically because our, our, uh, our offering to the customer is a winning offering. Uh, terms of pricing quality service and and and, pro, and, and, and proposal for the customers um byte is a key part of our ecosystem because most of most of uh, of uh, business units we are creating or the or the services that we are creating in our ecosystem start with a digital uh, connection uh you you will need access to 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 those services digital access and uh, in the past, in uh, in Mexico, access to internet was uh, very expensive. So that's why we we jump into creating Byte and and lowering the cost to customers to access to to, to internet through their mobile phones. So for us, uh, it's 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 a key part of how we build the ecosystem going forward. With the results that we have and uh, and, and 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 what we are seeing for the future, we. Keep, uh, we want to keep gaining market share, uh, becoming a, a, an even larger uh, operator and, and, and being a top uh, player in the, in the industry. And once we reach um, um, a, a bigger base of customers, 
there's we, we can unlock an opportunity to start monetizing more of those customers uh, through a whole ecosystem, through dif dis uh, different offerings or services to them. So we're very positive of what we are building and, and the pace it's growing and, and how we see it uh, unfold in the future, not only for the business invite itself, but how it contributes to the whole ecosystem. Um, and, and the other part, important part here is the uh, advertising around, uh, around, uh, around Byte. So uh, it, it helps us fuel our Walmart Connect offering uh, in, in a suite of, of, of solutions to, to the advertisers that we believe is it's, it's unique in, in the market. So uh, again, it's, it's a big part of what we are creating and we are very happy how, it, how it's unfolding. And just on Central America, so good good question around our growth. I have to say that if you look at Central America performance and you look, uh, I think on four of those countries, we are happy what they're doing and uh, and while we're actually competing in the, in the market. To say, as we alluded in our uh, transcript in the webcast, uh, somewhat softer performance in, in Costa Rica and uh, partially also driven by the deflation that we've been talking uh, about. And um, and potentially we probably need to gain, gain even more volume in that context. And that's uh, how you look to the H2. That's actually what we're doing. We put a set of uh, actions and a plan in place so that how we can capture more volume in particular in Costa Rica and, and in discount format. We are confident about the plans that we're putting in place and we should see increased growth going forward. And I think we'll also be partly helped by the There will be also a bit ever at least an expectation of some small price inflation in the country that will also tend to help of course the comp sales and overall uh, overall growth i think you look forward even further we have been open that we actually want to bring uh, more growth to the central america invest further in that uh, in that business and being even more aggressive in a way we have been opening st or will be opening stores in some of these markets and therefore, that will translate in the future as well to additional com sales. Thank you, Paulo. Ignacio, very clear. Thank you very much for your question. Our next question is from Mr. Bob Ford from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Hey, good morning, everybody, and thank you for taking my questions, and, and congratulations on the same store improvements and, and the improvements in price perception. Um, how big of a hit do you estimate the pull forward of transfer payments had on your same store sales in the second quarter? And can you discuss some of your inventory exit strategies coming out of the hot sale? And then lastly, Pablo, you mentioned the one-offs in the second quarter. How are you thinking about funding labor pressures moving forward? Thank you. So, sorry, can you repeat uh, uh, the, the, first the, the first question? So the, the first question was with respect to the, the impact of the early payments of transfer payments in, in February versus the second quarter and how it may have impacted your same store sales. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, Bob, thank you for the question. Um, what you see with the social programs is that, you no, know, based on the government elections, as you know, no, they couldn't, no, nope, advertise you no know, based on you no know, the government uh party that they own that you couldn't do the the program the social programs in Q2 based on laws and regulations so they pushed all of that into quarter 1 and that had mainly to your question on hot sale i think two effects the first is that there was less disposable income for durable goods and we saw some categories that were impacted in in the hot sale that compared to the last year we didn't have that impact. Some of the categories that we saw, you no, know, not as good performance were you no know, TVs, toys, and some video games. And then the second thing that happened within Hot Sale is that the PTU, which is the profit uh, sharing from the uh, companies, no, no, it, it it gets paid in May, and by law and regulation, you have the ability to pay to a certain point to the end of May. And the event, no, uh, probably not a good calendar effect, no, was planned in the middle of May. And that, no, limited the ability for customers to have more disposable income based on the PTU that uh, was available in the market versus in the prior years, you had it in June. So you had the full effect of the PTU and you had the full effect as well as the social programs. 
So those were you no know, uh, the the main impacts from a from a macro perspective, and then uh, some categories as well that we don't play strong in, like beauty and fashion. We're also good performers, and as you know, in extended assortment, we're still not there, and we're continuing to build uh, from that standpoint. Yeah. Yeah, let me build on that. Elections change a little bit the calendar for certain promotions like hot sale and 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 social um, um, you know social benefits. So that's why I think the right way to look at this second quarter is H one, considering Q one and Q two all together. Um, it, it will give a better understanding of how how uh, how the quarter and how the first half of the year happened. Um, because we have a lot of uh, changes in in with calendar effects, elections, and and and, and so on. Bob, let me address the question on uh, inventory. So you've asked about inventory post uh, hot sale season. Let me even zoom out a bit further, uh, Bob. I think on inventory management as a whole is something that we in a company are conscious that we need we need to do better, and we can do better. I think it's there an opportunity to reduce our days on hand. Something that we are putting in place, a task force to address that, because of course we liberate quite some cash, and of course with the improvements that it has in the, in all our metrics, I think it's an important one. I think if you refer just to the short term and how we actually the, how we address the inventory post hot sale season, it's part of the day to day business that we have to do when we have these types of seasons. I think the first things that we have to do, if we have some inventory that was left over as a result of the hot sale. We need to liquidate that. It's best to actually have it the right assortment in the moment that actually the customer wants to buy it. And we have to balance that within the the margins that uh, we have to manage on a, on an ongoing basis. So that's what typically we do, Bob. But that's no different than what we do in the in the past. Yeah, every year. Was there an additional question, Bob, that I think we are forgetting? There was another one. It was not like a problem, but it was really, you know, you had one offs in the first quarter that you, or second quarter that you referred to. Um, and I'm just wondering how you're thinking about funding those higher labor costs as we go forward. Yes, as I, as I said, uh, I think, I don't recall who was asking that uh, question anymore, but uh, as we should see, in the as we've been saying since the beginning of the, the year, so to speak, really a temporary reshape of the PL between the gross margin and the SGNA. Whilst we are able to drive the efficiency and the automation that will help us to fully offset the, the investments that we have in the in the SGNA, particularly in the labor costs, with the last four years and particularly this year have been quite acute with a twenty percent growth year on year. And you know that labor cost is a significant part of our our uh, our business in terms of uh, expense line. So I'm confident that we're doing the things that we are building pipeline for the future that will be able us then to to leverage the cost. Meanwhile, of course, we always have to be smart in the way we do the, those investments, the way we run the business with the cost, how much investments we put to accelerate growth, and of course, uh, driving efficiency margin and actually the benefits that we're bringing from the ecosystem that others don't have in order to ba- balance that in the overall margins that we deliver to all our shareholders and we deliver more recently that you have seen. I think that's what we have to do. and uh, But we do that, and I reiterate this for the third time in this um, Q&A, we do that without putting at our competitiveness uh, at jeopardy, because that's our mantra, and that's um, unique differentiation versus our competitors in, out there in the market. That makes perfect sense. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Bob. Thank you very much for your question. That was the last question. I will now hand over to Mr. Salvador Villaseñor for final comments. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for joining us in, in this event, and we we'll hope to see you again in next quarter results. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you.